How's it going, everybody? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Hey, Paul, Ron, Matt, how, where did you go pick up a Sonoff Mini? I want to know because I, I want another one. <laughs> I want more. I already had I already had uh, two that I've done, and now I need another one. Home sick from church today. Finally get to join a Sunday morning stream. Well, I'm happy, Jordan. I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry you're sick, though, but we're glad you're here. How's it going? Happy Sunday. Mark, I think you were first, weren't you? Hey, Jenny's here. Managed to catch the start. Back to work shortly. Okay, well, I understand. Thanks for being here. Woohoo, finally able to catch one of these Sunday live streams. All right, Orc Park, so happy. I'm so happy. Let's do this right off the bat. It's a unicorn kind of day. So everybody by now has probably seen, maybe not everybody, I guess, but you've seen the mini, the, the mini video, right? Saw them on AliExpress for around eight bucks. Is that right? Oh, so you bought one, but you didn't. Well, okay, I was hoping, I see, I see. I was hoping there was like a place that had them, like you could actually go physically get your hands on one. I actually, so... I, I want more of them, of course. I've got a couple that are supposed to be in the mail um, from Banggood, but uh, I, I what I I want to try some more. I want to do some more. Um, what I'm gonna do is I've got this one still, and thank God the exposure is awesome today. But whatever, this one is the one that I uh, flashed with the uh, US uh, USB adapters. No, the reason why did you catch that? Did you guys? If you if you read between the lines, you could have figured out why I um, why I did this. Um, so on the Tasmoda website, there is some instructions that say, "Well, don't use Sonoff Minimal." I didn't read that before I tried Sonoff Minimal. So when I say in the video, "Don't do that," or you'll be stuck with no other way to flash it than this, it's because I've lived it. <laughs> That's what I did. But now that I've done that, what that gives me is three volts and GPIO 16 plus RX and TX on these. So I think I'm gonna try some sensors on this guy. Might as well, since I soldered those lines on there, might as well, right? So that'll be fun. Many thanks for your video has actually been the main source of information for your, all right, well, great. Great, Omar, I hope I haven't steered you wrong too many times. I know, um, my way of doing things, sometimes um, I'm faster on the video than I am on the research <laughs> every, every once in a while. <laughs> we appreciate you discovering all the ways not to do things. You got it, Brian. You got it. <laughs> I'm your man. Hey, Bobby. Dave, how's it going? Um, I wanted to say there's a couple of things I saw up here. Waiting on your new house. But what do you say? Sonoff Mini Shelly for behind the switches. If what you want is just a switch, just a simple light switch, like what I did with the Sonoff Basics back in the day, right? The, the reason I'm still making YouTube videos, honestly, is because I did that one about, or a couple of them about putting a Sonoff Basic in your wall and hooking up a switch to it. And um, that was really popular at the time. And so now I still make videos because that kind of really got me going. Anyways, if that's your purpose is to just do a light switch, I don't see a better, least ex uh, less expensive certainly um, option than the Sonoff Mini. The Shelly, the Shelly One is the same or pretty good. I think the Shelly One gives you access to the pins. So if you want to get to us, if you want to add sensors, then Shelly One. Um, if you want, if you have more than one switch that you want to to use it on in that box than Shelly 2. Um, I wish Shelly 2, I wish they would, you know, well, maybe they don't need to, but they have power monitoring, which you don't always need on all, on all those places. So I would, I would like to have uh, something in between the one and the two for a different, you know, for a little less, less price, but I guess for five bucks or whatever the difference is, it doesn't ma matter that much. How much are the minis? They're eight bucks. They're eight bucks. Uh, let me go here and I'll get you a good, I actually have links ready. Got to do what I can to spread the link love. <laughs> Where's it at? Yeah. So, uh, a, a fun story I'll tell you about this Sonoff mini video too. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's find this Sonoff mini right here. No, that says touch buttons. That's not it. Okay. This is the Banggood link. It'll let me post links today. Sometimes it thinks I'm an invader. That's the Banggood link. And then 
I also have, oh, no, and the, Amazon doesn't have them. There's nobody on Amazon that has them. Why am I not a Sonoff distributor in the U.S. for Pete's sake? Do I need to talk to, do I need to talk to Maggie? Maggie's my, Maggie's my IT buddy, my Sonoff buddy. Let's see, copy this guy. And this one, Sonoff Mini, this one is from AliExpress. And I guess somebody said they had them uh, cheaper, I guess. They, there should be around eight bucks. From the, from the uh, IT website, they're about eight bucks. So, yeah, this is 950. Oh, new customer coupon for two bucks. Another dollar off if you spend more than 29. But delivery, 829. So it's going to take you a month to get them. Maybe there's other manufacturers. Okay, so here's a different company. This one's got them uh, for 850. Plus, you still get these discounts. So that's pretty good. If you get this plus two dollars, and so you can save a few bucks doing that one. That's a big long hunk and ugly link. Just hit the other one. Could you share the Excel file? You know what I need to do with the Excel file? I need to just put it on the website. Um, but yeah, I can share it. What I'm gonna do is make a can view uh, link, shareable link. Anyone with the link can view. Okay. So what this is, this is my, this is like my full product. Like this is where when I, when I do links for videos, um, I make them, I put them all here. I've been doing this now for a few months to try and keep a, a little bit better um, organization on things so that I'm not wasting a bunch of my time looking for links when I need to put something in the video. Cause a lot of these things I use over and over again. So now what I do is I, I use bank. This is Banggood. That's my affiliate number, by the way. So if you ever go to Banggood, use that affiliate number. Um, these links over here, Amazon, these are also affiliate, but these are links. I used to do ones for the UK, but I just, it's, it takes a lot of time to go back and forth. And then these are ones from AliExpress and these are also affiliate links, um, that I've chopped up to make. So anyways, that's how I keep my links organized. I'm going to put this on the website. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but that reminds me. Now's a good enough time. I'm recruiting help for the website. So Jerry um, has done a great job of uh, getting me switched over from uh, HostGator to, I think it's GoDaddy. I'm not 100% sure what service, but anyways, it's it's faster. It's much faster, and, um, and he's hosting it for me out of the goodness of his heart. Wonderful him, saving me some money. And then um, he's also done the, the rework of the... Um, him and his grandson-in-law, <laughs> but uh, he's the mastermind. And so it's the website is new-ish looking, and I want to make it better. So I, I still need, I still need some help. Like w when I post a video or something, it, I, if it, if I have to spend another half an hour to go and make a post on the website, then that's you know it's not always going to get done. So those the kinds of things that I'm looking for for help are like just to take links and some videos and things, and when I post something new put it on the website, you know, that kind of stuff. It's pretty easy. Go daddy. Love the customer service. Great. Oh, there's Jerry right there. Hey, <laughs> uh, another live one doc becoming a daily event. Did you guys count how many, um, yeah, self-hosting I would, Chris, I, I'm afraid I would run out of my data way too fast as it is. We run out every year and the, uh, or every year, every month because the kids stream so much YouTube and, and stuff. Just placed your order from IT, ordered two with registered airmail. Total was $21.50, $8.50 each plus $4.24 blah, 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 shipping. Yes. Very good. Good, Paul. How, does, did they have an estimated um, arrival for you? Recommendations for a laser sensor to form part of an alarm. When it breaks, get an MQTT message. I don't know, Jonathan, but I would like to hear what everybody else says. Hey, Will, how's it going? Yeah, I would like to hear what everybody else says. What do you guys, anybody using laser sensors? Because that would be really interesting for me. I would like to know. Um, I placed it. You're you're likely to get them sooner. I think from uh, IT probably. I'm hoping. Ordered ten Sonoff Minis, ten to fifteen days. Wow, where'd you order them from? IT. Data limits on home broadband. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They just kind of surprised us with that. I'm sure it was in some. You know, they probably sent some email. Oh, our our terms of service have changed, you know, and you just like click through whatever, whatever. And then, yeah, guess what? Now you can only get a terabyte and then you're hosed, right? 
how can you extend the combi the combi range? Nigel needs to extend the combi range. Uh, you can get plugs or bulbs and distribute them around your house. Um, Frank can tell you more about that than I can, but that's what he told me. I haven't done it yet. But uh, anything that's Zigbee, which is the combi stuff, right? Anything that is powered, that's a Zigbee device. So receptacles like this and light bulbs, they work as a mesh. So if you put these in different places around your house, that should help you to connect to other devices, other sensor devices uh, easier. That should do what you're looking for, I think. Oh, you're already, you already have Ikea bulbs 10 feet and it's not helping? Uh-oh. Ruh row. Sneaky. Yeah, we get a we get a terabyte from a terabyte of data for the house from um, Xfinity, which I guess is Comcast. And uh, when you use it all, excuse me, when you use it all, they charge you. And it's like at first it was like ninety dollars the first time, and then they changed it. Now it's like fifty dollars for ten gigabytes or something like that. And every ten you go over, it's another fifty. It's Freaking robbery is what it is. Whatever. No such limits. Worst I could possibly get is a letter saying, hey, you're using a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you downloading illegal things? Please answer me, bro. Okay, Isaac, what's up, dude? I missed your question. What was your question? I can try and scroll back. Oh, I have followed you for some time and don't know if you go to the, your favorite Oh, home assistant over, over open hab. Uh, I'm always going to be a home assistant guy. Isaac, I'm going to be a home assistant guy. Um, I'm nothing bad about open hab. They're, they're based on different platforms, right? I think, um, home assistant is based on Python and open hab is based on Java. You guys that are actual programmers can tell me if I'm, if I'm spewing lies, but that's, that's how I understand it. Um, open hab has a really easy to manipulate, um, user interface. Uh, Home Assistant has made huge strides towards uh, a better user interface in the last six months. Um, and you can do some amazing things with it now. It still takes, it's still not drag and drop and rescaling, you know, sliding things open uh, bigger and smaller like OpenHab is, I think. I think that's how OpenHab does theirs. Um, but they, you know, what you can do with uh, Home Assistant is pretty amazing. So no limits there, Glenn. Hey, Andy. Hey, Andy, how you doing? Oh, thank you, William. I'm I'm happy that you're okay. I couldn't remember everybody that was saying they would help before. I will contact you, William, as well, so you can help. If so, then I'm going your way. Thanks. All right, Isaac. I, I, home assistant for me, man, all the way. So, what did you miss? You know, Michael, we're just so far just kind of chatting. Oh, Fan 03 coming off Bango. They're easy to flash with Tasmoda. Let's go right to that. Let's go right to that. Somebody asked about the Fan 03. Well, guess what I have. Well, first thing I have to do is make it so you guys can actually see in this camera, don't I? Let's let's work on that for a second. Um, I have the Fan 03. It just arrived from Banggood. See, a professional would have all this already lined up. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's better. Now we can see what we're looking at. So let's see. Now here's a funny thing. Just by looking at these, can either can anyone tell me which is the O3 and which is the O2? Which is the fan O3 and which is the fan O2? Hey Brendan. Hey Frank. How's it going? Java sucks. Um I don't know anything about the LED controller spider. LED controller model spider. I haven't, I haven't heard of it. Left is O3. Yes. Yes, it is. No, actually. Wait, you're wrong. Wait. No, this is, yeah, this is O3. This is the O3. So what gave it away for you? Pretty sure that's the O3. Crap. See, now I can't even tell. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yes. I'm pretty sure this one's the O3. The only, the way I can know for sure is that I have another O2. So I can look and see which one it is, but I'm pretty sure this one's the O2. And this one's the three. I thought I was looking at the wires though, and I thought the wires were different. Um, but basically, they look the same, right? 
So I was hoping that they had done something different about this whole capacitor issue because I don't think the relay looks newer. This definitely looks different, right? This is shaded different. Set is invalid. Oh, what did I invite you to? Oh, really? Oh, I probably have to invite you. Oh, I have to do something different, Jerry, I think. So you mean to that channel? I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Sorry. Oh, anyways, I think this is bigger. Uh, there's a little bit of rearrangement here. You can see this is, I believe this is the RF control chip, right? And it's now on a little module. It's hard to see from your angle maybe, but it's up off the board. See that? It's up off the board where this one was soldered right on the board. Um, I did notice over here they've got what I'm guessing is some LEDs, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe those are just resistors. No, it looks like they're not even there. It's just solder points for resistors. I don't know. Anyways, it's not too different. So I think I will finally install it before too long. <laughs> I've had these these things forever, and I haven't uh, done anything with them. But uh, I have a fan downstairs in one of the guest bedrooms that's broken. And so I think the way to fix it might be just to take out its brains and put in one of these. I, I still wish that we could do this from down here, you know, um, but our fans in the U.S. are not made to do that. When I say down here, I mean in the switch. Our fans in the U.S. are not made to do that. I'm going to have to get up into the fan and then rearrange those capacitors, take these off or use the other ones or whatever. So, but anyways, yeah, this is the Fan 03. Is it easy to flash? I would expect it is because I see right here, those are probably the serial pins, right? Yep. Those are the serial pins right here. Um, so that should be pretty easy to flash. I would be almost, I would be shocked if this button was not connected to GPIO zero. So you'll need an FTDI adapter, stick it in there, hold that down, turn it on and you'll be good to go. Um, I don't think there's an over the air way to flash this. There's been some, there's been some, some question, some wondering about whether or not other devices from Sonoff are going to be able to, uh, be flashed with their DIY mode right now. I don't think so. I don't think so because um, they, well, for one thing, a device like this, they don't have broken out already. GPIO 16, oops, GPIO 16 is not like sitting out here on the board somewhere where you can flash it. Oh, you might want to be careful. There's going to be two sets of pins. Yeah, this, I'm guessing this would probably flash this other guy. So watch out. Just make sure you get the right set of pins there. It's probably on the Tasmoda website. I haven't I haven't played with this thing very much. But anyways, I don't think you're going to be able to flash other Sonoff devices with the um, DIY mode. At least not yet. Maybe at some point you can, but not yet. Um, support for the Fan L3 is the latest Tasmoda development release. Base 7. Oh, Base 71. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you, Michael. For iFan 3 is in the latest Tasmoda development release. Okay, cool. How long does it take for the development release to get to be like the major release? A few weeks, a month? I appreciate your help with Tasmoda, Michael. You're a genius, by the way. <laughs> uh, one on your right, 03. It says so on the silk screen. <laughs> it does it really? Oh, there it is right there. Fan 03. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I thought it was, so I, I should have gone with my guts. My guts told me, my guts told me that this, because when I looked at the wires uh, yesterday, when I first pulled this thing apart, I remembered these colors and these seemed different to me. So anyways, yeah. So you can just erase the last 10 minutes because I was telling everybody wrong stuff. Big surprise. <laughs> A month or two. Okay, great. The actual answer is, it depends. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Disable the buzzer with command set option 67. Oh good. The buzzer is easily enabled. Okay, good. Anyone reached out to IT about the capacitor stuff? Yeah, I know they have, Chris. I haven't personally, but I will, I, I will say something again to Maggie. Maggie's my IT buddy. I did say something to her for what it's worth. So it's not like an official uh, anything. I'm, I'm sure the forums are full of that stuff, but I did tell her that, um, you know, that we have the problem we have with these in the U S um, 
Dev branch is stable. Okay. Separate experimental branch. That's the one I avoid unless something critical. Okay, cool. All right, Michael, I'll do that. I'll check it out and I'll put that on this one. I'll put that on this one for sure. Uh, so I want to tell you a fun story. If you guys, if there's anything that, um, do I have, how many mods do I have out here in the, in the world today? Um, my mod friends, if you guys will help me, if there are like questions that, um, people are asking that I'm missing, repeat them for me. Okay. Um, all right. What I want, what I want to say, what I tell you a fun story. So if you, if you looked at the mini, the Sonoff mini video that I put out this morning, and I say this morning because I put it out at, it was like 3 a.m. Uh, but here's the fun backstory, okay? Uh, the capacitor issue, Andy, is that if you connect this, this Sonoff's fan modules to a fan in the U.S., um, the fan in the U.S. already has some capacitors built in. And so when you add that to this with the capacitors that this has, the capacitor is what, what varies the speeds. And what you end up with is three speeds on your fan slow, barely moving and nothing. <laughs> so you, you have to do some modifications. You have to take either take the capacitors out of your fan and replace them with these or switch these for those or something like that. You have to do a couple things, but anyways, we'll, we'll get to the fan. That's, that's what I know about the fan thing. I haven't done it myself and that, that's why I haven't done it because I haven't wanted to take my, um, take my fan down. <laughs> so I'm going to use this other fan that, um, is broken already. So, so yeah, the, that's the capacitor issues essentially because, because the fan module from Sonoff already has capacitors in it. And because there's capacitors in the fans in the U S already to vary the speeds, the addition of more capacitors really slows down the speed of the fans. And so in order to get a normal, uh, thanks, thanks Carlo. In order to get the normal, um, fan speeds, you have to eliminate some of the capacitors. And so you have to just, I think what was working best, as I understand it, was to take these off and to use the ones from your fan in place of these. So you'll have to kind of unsolder some of these connections and solder on the other capacitors. It's kind of a pain. The speed controller, five wires from a module, replaced one already. Ooh. Ooh, Linkus, Linkus will. Linkus, tell us. Can someone point me to docs on changing an icon depending on state? Somebody can. Yes. Can somebody help SA Limelight with that? I'm sure you guys can point him to the right stuff. I'm going to finish telling my story because it's a fun story and I want to tell you. So I'm going to try not to get distracted. Uh. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that. Okay. So last night, well, let, let me back up because I'm going to tell the story. This is the long version. Okay. You guys get the long version of the story. So I filmed... The uh, flashing of these videos of the Sonoff minis like instantly as soon as I got them and I had it all filmed before I ever even did the live stream where we showed it off and talked about them. Um, and then last or then Friday night, I had to work all night. I did the night shift Friday night. So we streamed them. So Thursday, I got them, flashed them all Thursday night, uh, we did the live stream about them on Friday. Uh, and then I wanted to take the footage to work. And to edit them at night. Cause usually when I'm on night call, I'm laying in the bed in the call room and um, I can't sleep there anyways. And so I would have going to just do the editing. Well, I forgot to copy them from my main computer onto my, um, onto my laptop. And I had my, the laptop's new and I don't have my VPN set up on the laptop yet. Just haven't gotten around to it because I can remote access the home assistant. That's mostly what I need. So I didn't have a way to get the footage. So I didn't get to edit them Friday night. Came home Saturday, slept all day because I was up all night. <clears throat> and then, uh, then when I got home and got awake, I was, I was editing. And so I edited most of yesterday evening and I was getting done finally with editing around like one or two in the morning. And I set the video, I had it all done, put it there, um, uh, put it up on YouTube and scheduled it to be released right before the stream this morning. I thought, oh, that'll be fun. We'll, we'll do it right before the stream. We can talk about it during the stream and stuff. Well, while I'm sitting there looking at my um, page of, of posting the video, uh, a thing pops up for Andres, Andres Spies. Um, I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong. I'm sorry. But Andre, uh, Andres, the, um, the guy with the Swiss accent. So a video notification pops up from him that says uh, he just posted a video about the Sonoff Mini versus the Shelly One. And I went, oh, 
because I was so excited. I was so excited because I thought nobody else has done a Sonoff mini flashing video. I'm going to be the first. <laughs> and then Andres posts his and I was like, dang it. But, uh, and then I watched his and if you watch mine and his next to each other, you're going to see a lot of similarities. And so I was, I'm watching his knowing that mine, you know, that I'm done with it and then I was ready to post it and I didn't. Oh, and his had been posted for like 40 minutes when I first watched it. So it'd been, it, 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 he just barely posted it last night as well. So, um, and, and so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like, well, Paul Hibbert, he, he beat us for the Sonoff mini for flashing the Sonoff mini. He did the basic. I don't know if he did the mini. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Anyways, whatever. Um, Paul did it differently. Cause, cause like, um, uh, with Andres, he flashed with Tasmoda. You know, he did the DIY mode and flashed Tasmoda. I guess, I guess, uh, Paul did it too, pretty much, but he did it really fast. Anyways, I, I didn't feel like Paul's was the same, uh, similarity to mine, but no, anyway, the, the point was, the point was that I'm getting way off track. It doesn't matter. The point was, um, the point was, uh, so I got, so I saw Andres' video that he just posted it. And so then I was like, dang it. Um, and then I thought, well, since we, you know, we did, we did it so much alike and, and he made some, uh, some really funny comments in his video, right? He says some funny things. I can't repeat to my kids watch, <laughs> but he made, uh, yeah, Paul does do all his videos differently. Um, but anyways, Andres made some really funny comments and I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to Andres. I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to him. So he's got a discord channel. And so I, I, I'm a member of his discord channel. So I went to his discord channel, like two 30 in the morning and started poking around and asking, you know, Hey, is Andres around? You know, how do I get a hold of him? And, um, somebody gave me his tag cause it's not just Andres, it's something else. So I, I wrote him this nice long little message, you know, just saying, Hey, fellow YouTuber, you know, I just, uh, love what you do. Appreciate your, your work and all this. And I saw you just posted a Sonoff mini video and I was just about to post a Sonoff mini video. It was really funny. And I said, could you, what would you think about coming on and doing a live stream with me sometime? And, uh, I, you know, I didn't expect that he would answer. I, I assume he gets like, I get a lot of personal messages and it's hard to respond to them all. And, um, he probably gets five times as many as I do, but, uh, he did, he replied pretty quickly and he's like, yeah, I can do that. So, and then we had this nice little chat. We we're just going back and forth talking about, you know, the United States and he's been to Reno and we, you know, we talked about a bunch of things. And, uh, so now we're buddies. We got, we got connected and he's going to come on to a live stream. So I thought about having him come on today, but I thought, no, let's, let's, let's prep it a little bit. Let's make sure everything goes, you know, smoothly, give him some time to prepare. He's about eight hours ahead of us, uh, my time zone. So I think he's in Germany or Switzerland or someplace. So anyways, it was really cool. It was really cool, um, to be able to make buddies with the guy with the Swiss accent last night and all because of this video. So then after that, I was like, well, I'm not going to wait to post the video anymore. Like I'm just going to post it right now. So I made it live at like three 15 in the morning or something like that before I went on. What's his channel. Oh man. Um, you got, you're going to love him, Carlo. If you haven't seen him, you're going to love him right here. He's one of my promoted channels on the side of my, I only promote a few and he's one of them. He's a star. He's a great guy. You know, another thing about Andres, and, and I'll talk to him about this too when I get him on here, but he has a video. If you look back through his video, see, this is the one that I saw. And I was like, what? Dang it. He just did that. And I was just about to, but he did a video probably over a year ago, um, about should I keep doing YouTube, which at the time for me was a was an important topic because I'd been doing videos for like a year and it had been going okay. Um, but it was hard. It was hard to do a video every week for a year. And I was wondering if I was doing the right thing by spending as much time as I was doing it and everything. And so he, somewhere on his channel here, and I can't find it right now, but somewhere on his channel here, he's got a video that says, should I keep doing YouTube? And he's very, He's, he's an engineer, right? To the bone. So he's very analytic about how he goes about a decision like that. And so he's, uh, so he goes through, you know, and talks about a whole bunch of different things, uh, in his decision-making process for should he keep making YouTube videos or not? And then he decides, yeah, he's going to keep making YouTube videos. So for me, that was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, that was really, for me, being a very new to this whole thing at that point, still new really. Um, but uh, and, and I looked at him as somebody who was more experienced and he was going through that decision process and it helped me a lot. So it was really cool. So I, I'm still making videos because of Andres. I started making them probably because of Ben, but I'm still making them 
in part because of Andres. So, um, anyways, that was really cool. I kind of got to make friends with the hero last night and that was really fun at 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, been watching him several years and the most of the tools from his favorite tools video. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I don't watch enough of his videos for sure, but, um, I have watched him over the, oh, in the past. It's just, I've been, it's been so hard for me to watch anything with as much time as I've spent doing my own lately. So did you guys, so I, and I have to put a, I, did you see how many videos I posted this week? Holy smokes, man, like that, some serious video. Hey, each meet, how's it going? <laughs> So enough mini video. So scary seeing your fingers near. I knew somebody was going to say that, Kevin. I knew somebody was going to say that. I knew it. I'm wa I was watching the video footage and I knew that was going to come up. I, I, I haven't gone and read the comments yet on that video, but I knew that somebody was going to talk about how close my fingers were to that, um, to those contacts. It's not that, it's not that scary. I, I know it, you're right. You're right. I, and I certainly could have shocked myself. Where's my other one? Here it is. Um, but they're recessed. You know, they're recessed. So you, you put your finger on this part. You can rub your finger up and down on this. I can even push my finger down there, and I don't think I'm getting any contact on those screws at all. So they're sunk in there pretty good. Same with this. So I do. I do. That's funny you say that because I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Hey, from Bosnia. How's it going? Where is Ben? I have not heard of anything from Ben in a long time. I wish he wish him well. I hope he comes back. He's always got good stuff to say. And and it's fun to watch him. So I hope he comes back. <laughs> oh, that is fun. All right. Oh, that's a new channel for you, Carlo. Oh man. Oh, I'm glad you got, you got a long ways to go now to look that up or a long ways to go to, to catch up. I, I need to see, he is the genius when it comes to Laura as well. His Laura videos. Um, he's the guy that understands. See, that's the thing about, and if, and if you watch his video about the Sonoff mini, and I put a link to his, and I told him this in, in my little chat to him initially, my first little message to him was I said, hey, I also put a link to your video in my video because uh, there's, a, there's a method through the DIY mode on the Sonoff, this new Sonoff DIY stuff. There, you can do REST API commands. So HTTP commands you can send to the Sonoff, and I assume you can get information back. You can request information. I don't know. I don't. And that's the, that's the thing, right? I'm not an engineer. I'm not a programmer. I'm just a doctor, <laughs> but he, um, he understands that stuff way better. And so he put in his video, how you go about, uh, posting those, uh, HTTP commands for the Sonoff, which is great. So there's a part in my video where I say, Hey, I don't know how to do this, but if you want to do it, here's the documents during that part. I, I link his video and say, you know, you can go check that out. So, all right, since we're everywhere right now, what, what are you talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the doorbell project? Yes. Check out, let's check out Frank's doorbell project. Uh, ESP 01. I have not personally used the ESP 01. Um, I think that's what, I think that's what they use. Oh my gosh. Look at this. This is awesome. I'll accept your cookies. Sorry, homie. Hey, Frank here. May I send you a notification when I post something new? How can I get some help? How can I do this? Yes, please. <laughs> I need some, I need some website help from Frank. I, can I say now that I got the sneak peek, Frank, now that you did this, now that you posted it, he showed me this and he said, don't tell anybody. <laughs> so I'm excited about this. It makes total sense. It makes total sense. This is, this is great. I'm going to probably do something just like this because I still have wires that go out to my doorbell right now. It's what's there is the charging plate for the, for the ring, but no ring, no ring connected. So, but yeah, I haven't used an ESP 01. I'm sure it's like a mini, right? Is that it right there? Well, you've got this with a relay on it too, right? On signal.com, one signal.com. What would you do with an ESP01? Scroll down a bit. Oh, I thought that was your voice. <laughs> like, what is that noise? Is this going to copyright me? So are you explaining something? Oh, you're pulling those pins apart. 
You're pulling the pins off it. Oh, bending it a little bit. That's all. So you can put that on there flat. I see. I see. A URL for this? Oh, yeah. Well, it, uh, Frank posted it. Uh, Father Time, did you post it, Frank? Yeah, it's in Frank's post. Just scroll up a little bit. HTTPS slash Frank link slash doorbell. <laughs> the same doorbell with a D1 Mini. Oh, do you make a little box too? Small project box? Dude, you've been you've been hard at work at this. Frank, you whipped all this together pretty quick. Nicely done, my friend. Nicely done. So there's the one I see. So and and you don't get a lot of pins, right? Not easy access to very many pins. Is that what you meant, Will, by you limited? GPIO zero and two and RX and TX and that's it. Yeah. That's how it gets cheap, I suppose. I don't know, what do these cost? I mean, I guess you can probably give me a link here, right? I love how you do this, by the way. And that's the one source.com. That is that what I should do? That's what I should do this too. These are the kind of things I need help with. These are the kind of things I need help with, because I'm just no good, no good. Oh, this comes with the relay. I got you. Buy them in a bundle. Awesome. Man, good work, Frank. God, you really put that together nice. Well done. Well, there you go. The Frank Bell. The Frank Bell. Hey, bud. That's cool. Sorry I missed the post. Oh, that's okay. Rob from the hookup did one a while ago. D. Two dollars for the ESP and the relay. That's crazy. Oh, so go instead of yeah, that's right. We were talking about that too. We were talking about how I didn't even think about that when you when I should have clicked on that one instead. Um Yeah, we were discussing the price differences between Banggood and AliExpress sometimes. It's large sometimes. I love Woody. Woody's my Banggood buddy, and I get a lot of free stuff because of Woody. Um, I wish I had a similar arrangement with AliExpress because they certainly are cheaper. But I do have it. I do have affiliate links there still, so that's okay. Is there a voltage regulator in that relay board? Let's see, you must, you hooked up a phone charger to it, right, Frank? So probably not a voltage regulator on this, I don't think. Yeah, because he was trying to, he was delivering just five volts. So really what he did was just with the relays, you got one connected to the ringer. And, and then you've got the bell contacts coming into this, right? So you have Wi-Fi, okay, so, you, so with the Wi-Fi on this, that's how you connect it to home system or whatever, right? Did the Sonoff RF bridge doorbell thing, but they don't work anymore. Bridge picks up the code, forwards it to home system, but then nothing. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a bummer, Chris. You know, the other thing to, well, I don't know, do you use Zigbee, Chris? Because they do have those mini buttons too. If you're doing it in a place where you don't have uh, wires, this is a great way. Frank's way here is a great way to do it with your wired doorbell. I don't know that there's going to be a better way. I doubt it. The wiring. Okay, cool. Oh, there you go. So here's your old phone charger. And that is... Okay, this is how you power this board. Okay, great. And then you've got... So this is this is your doorbell. Oh, because this thing runs AC? Is that what it is? What's this? Or it's just because this is a 12-volt... This is part of the chime though, right? So whatever your chime, you know, you you have to supply power to your chime separately. If your chime has its own power in there, you can just run power to this, right? But your chime would have to be, yours is 12 volts. So if you're running it off of this, yeah, you, okay, I see what you're saying. Yes, you do have to have power separate. So what you're doing is you're just interrupting the power. You're just like unplugging it, plugging it back in essentially with the relay, switching it on, switching it off with the relay. So, right, sorry. The power comes from here. The power is not from this. For the for the chime. Um, currently watching, yeah. Oh, great. All right, thank you, Ramsey. We'll chat. We will chat. All right. Uh, anyways, that's great. I wonder. So I don't even have this chime 
thing, I don't think, anymore. Because mine was all part of this intercom system that looked like it was built in the 80s. <laughs> With the Sonoff SV handled the doorbell voltage. Yeah. Sonoff SV can go all the way to, I think it's 24 volts. Um, the trick is make sure that this is not AC. Make sure that's not AC. Because sometimes it, you'll have, like for um, the alarm panel, it's that way. For the alarm panel, for your thermostat, potentially, it's tw it's 12 volt AC instead of DC. So just make sure that uh, that that's because you I don't I don't think you can put 12 volt AC into a Sonoff SV. I would doubt it. It takes both AC and DC. Okay, cool. Maybe the Sonoff SV does as well. Does anybody know? Here's your solution to the USB programmer. For the ESP01 programmers you buy don't actually program without modification. Oh, wow. Interesting. Get the diode to convert AC to DC. There's probably a pretty simple board for that, right, Brendan? Should be. Should be easy. Why 12 volt AC? That just seems dumb to me. I'm sure there's a reason. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> All right. How's it going, John? What else? What other fun stuff have you guys been doing? This is, once again, Frank amazes me, but uh, that's a that's a pretty nice project and couldn't be any cheaper. So there you go. And that's the one pin that goes out to your uh, doorbell. Oh, and then you've got ESP Home. Here's your ESP Home doorbell sketch. Disable the chime during the late hours. That's genius. That's genius. This is awesome. Streaming the front door camera when someone's at the front door. Dude, it is all here. Frank. Camera play stream, front door camera. I still haven't done this, but I need to. And you play it on the living room TV. You can play this on the on the uh, Google Home pretty easy, right? Because I have Google Home right here. I need to be doing that. I've got, I've got more cameras now to install too. I'm not sure even where to put them all. More smart doorbell automation ideas. Nice. Google turn off the doorbell. Unknown person. <laughs> Where's the part about the Nerf gun? Where's the part about the Nerf gun? Where the Nerf gun shoots the people at the front door you don't want. That's missing from your ideal list. <laughs> Thermostat relays keep firing. I know my AC uses 20 volt AC, but the relays are rated for up to 240 volt. I don't know what the deal is. Oh, that's funny. That's a bummer, Chris. Um, could it be any other kind of funkiness like retain messages or disconnect, reconnect from Wi-Fi, setting it off for some other reason? So, um, or hey, can you try replacing those relays? I don't know how you put it together, but um, anyways, I don't know. That's a bummer. Yeah. I mean, cause having 24 volt, they keep frying, huh? I see. They're not firing. They're frying. I'm sorry. That's what happens when I talk faster than I think. <laughs> that's what, oh, that's crazy. Current, maybe? There couldn't be a lot of current. Why would there be a lot of current going through those? That shouldn't be the problem. But you might check that. How do you fit all that doorbell in your door? Oh, no. the uh, I think he doesn't put all this outside. He doesn't put all this outside, Namdi. He doesn't put it all outside. This is the only part that's outside. It's just the normal push button. It's just the normal button. And then the wires go into your house somewhere. And what you need to do is find out where they go. They're usually going to go to something like, you know, the chime and something simple like that. And you interrupt them at that point. So they're probably in the ceiling or in a closet or something like that. Mine were in the wall and behind a little panel. And that's where you, that's where you'll put all this stuff. Okay. The relays are literally going out. I ordered a couple of five volt trigger 30 amp relays. Yeah, that's weird. Sonoff basic died when our house got a power surge. Oh. Every time you hear that bling, I'm paying attention to someone over here. The last paragraph may interest you. Most old oh, LE RGB controller.
Oh. RGB LED module gives for about a dollar and can control addressable LED strips. Wow. Oh, because so you plug the ESP01 into this and then that thing plugs into a strip of LEDs. 68 cents. Is that the same connector? Is that the connector that the LEDs use? I can't get a good look at it. Is that the connector that the LEDs, can we just plug that into the LEDs? Gosh, that'd be awesome. Power there, ESP01 there. Huh. Just can't get enough. Oh, don't don't start singing copyrighted songs, Dr. Z's. Oh goodness. Switch to a Shelly because it has power surge protection. Yeah. First time on the live stream. Hey Paul, glad you're here, man. Glad you are here. Hey Guillermo. If you have 20 volt AC, just get a buck converter filter cap rectifier and put it on a prototype board. It should work well. Okay, great. There you go. Brendan's got a solution for us for the 24 volt to DC to get it to DC. <clears throat> strike. Which strike are you at? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. They haven't, they've, they've definitely, they've definitely struck me. Like they've, they've, you know, I've, I don't know how many probably three or four, three or four times that I've gotten an email that said, Hey, you know, you've breached some copyright thing. You know, we're going to demonetize this video or like the, the time with the NBA playoffs, they took the video down completely. Um, so the, but they haven't, but if I look at my YouTube page and it says like copyright strikes and there's nothing, they don't they like, they, like they, you know, they kind of patted me on the hand and, haven't really gotten anything against me, which is good. I don't really want, like, I don't mind, you know, being chided a little bit, but I don't, I don't want to do anything that would risk my ability to continue to post videos. So, and being such a small, such a small, uh, whatever YouTuber, um, I, I, you know, they don't need me or they don't care. You know, they could very easily just wipe me out and it wouldn't matter. That's my kids screaming at each other. <laughs> can never open Frank's Alex Express links, but you guys can. I wonder why not. That's weird. That is weird. Maybe Frank knows why. Is there something with the um, with the way with that the way the site that has the three links together or something like that? Oh, an ad blocker maybe. Playing around with ESP zero one and battery solar this weekend. Can ESP Home put a board into deep sleep mode? I think so. I think it can. ESP Home Deep Sleep. Yep. There you go. I don't know much else about it. I haven't uh, done anything else. Um, I don't... Oh, you're asking him if he has a pie hole. I have this pie hole. That's what you mean. <laughs> Some of us are... That's an expression in America. I don't know if everybody else in the rest of the world says that, but... Shut your pie hole. <laughs> that's this is your pie hole. Uh, maybe that's a maybe that's universal. You guys and the rest of the world can tell us if that's universal. Um, so do you want to? You guys want to change topics again? We can always we can always go back and uh. forth. You know that it's easy enough to do. Um, yeehaw! I wanted to. So speaking of garage doors, somebody somebody said something about garage door, right? Was it, I just saw, was it Will? Yeah, Will said something about garage door. And uh, so my dad, I think I told you guys this before, My I asked my dad, dad, what can I do for you with all this smart home stuff that I do? What can I do to help you? You know, my dad's, he's still doing great, but he's older. He's, I don't think he's 70 yet, but he's getting there. He's getting there. Um, And he said, I would like to know if my garage door is open or closed. And I'm thinking, okay. Do I want to install home assistant and, you know, get a garage and do a garage door opener for him and all that stuff and have him have to worry about that. And then for remote access, you either have to set up a port or do, um, Nabucasa for five bucks a month. And, and, you know, he's like, 
my dad works at Napa Auto Parts now. He actually had a nice retirement and a whole fancy thing, but now he works at Napa Auto Parts. So five bucks a month is not something that he needs to pay for just to know if his garage door is open or not. And then, of course, Woody. Woody to the rescue. Woody says, hey, do you want to try this thing? And this is one of these, I think, they, I don't remember what they sell these for, but these are some of these things that some of these guys are selling for like a hundred bucks. I think they might be 40 or 50. Um, on the, like this one directly from Banggood might be less expensive. Uh, but basically, and I'm going to take it apart. In fact, we can take it apart right now, see what's inside. But I mean, look at that thing. Tell me that's not a sewn off basic, right? <laughs> it, it, that's exactly what it is. They've just bought it, I'm sure, from Sonoff Unbranded and then put their own silk screen on it and did some stuff on the inside. But basically, they're selling you all this hardware, which has to have, let's see, is there some sort of a sensor in here? No, there's no sensor in here either. This is just ways to mount the wires and stuff. There's no sensor. This, oh, there's the sensor, silly. So here's the sensors, just a reed switch. My word. Should I, I should, uh, this looks like, this looks like, um, uh, patent infringement. <laughs> Didn't I do this? <laughs> Anyways, this is uh, this is the reed switch. It's on a nice long wire here. Golly, that thing's going to go forever. Yeah, wow. That's really long. So that's good. That's really long. Looks like it's easy to mount. Well, here's the other half. There's the magnet piece. And then they've got it so it just plugs in. So that'll be nice. And it runs to you. So... Uh, I have to find it. Give me a minute and I'll find the garage. I'll find the link for this. If anybody wants to look at it, we can look at how much it costs. I want to take it apart. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to do for my dad. I'm going to do this for my dad. Next time we go up to his house, I'm going to take this up there and install it for him and just set him up with the Tuya app and, and send him on his way and he'll be fine. Not, I know, um, you know, this is never going to be my solution that I would use for myself, but there are some times where maybe, uh oh, that screw is stripped. Uh oh, <laughs> I might not be getting in this thing. <laughs> yeah. Getting there. <laughs> I can't push too hard on this. It hurts. Ooh, just posted an RF wireless sensor option. No RF needed. Discord live chat. Awesome. It looks like Torx. Maybe it is. Am I, am I just... No? I mean, it looks like... It, now it looks like an Allen wrench, an Allen screw because I stripped the heck out of it. <laughs> It's a childproof sewn off. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Getting there. Getting there. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. We're going to celebrate. Woo. <laughs> All right. I just want to prove to myself and the world that this is a sewn off basic inside here. And did they glue it too? Good grief, fellas. Oh my gosh. They must have glued it. I know what to do about that too. Now I'm determined. I'm missing. <laughs> Chinese, Chinese metal. Smash it to pieces. That's true. I could just 3D print another one for my dad. <laughs> Or actually, it's just a sewn off basic box. Oh my gosh, I've got 50 of these. That's not true, actually. I think I threw most of them away. Ah. Good gravy. Oh, am I missing screws? No. Goodness sakes. Yeah, just got to break the glue. <clears throat> Or the screwdriver. I am gonna break this flipping thing. All right, for all you Chinese device manufacturers out there, you don't have to do this. This is unnecessary, okay? <laughs> Band-aid required, yeah. 
I'm going to be bleeding in a minute. Ah. Jeez. Ah. Got it. Get big, Clive. All right. Oh my gosh, it's not a sun off basic. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse. Goodness me. Goodness me. Well, there is not much to that, is there? And they did just screw those in. They didn't they didn't bother soldering those AC wires in. Uh, they did. They hot glued these over here. These contacts. Two to the sensor. Two. To, oh, this is what triggers your garage door. This is what you have to put on your garage door switch. So this isn't even going to work for everybody. You know, I've gotten a lot of <laughs> dock one sewn off zero <laughs> sledgehammer. <laughs> um, no, I've had I've had people that make uh, comments and ask in in video uh, video comments about. Some garage door openers, you can't just put two wires to the switch and touch them together. I don't know. I don't know all the inner workings of why, but um, in some cases, that's it's not that simple. So, um, so this wouldn't even work for all of them. But, anyways, that's interesting. Wow, that's that's crummy in there. But whatever. Here's a. I'm sure that's not not quite an O1, right? But. That's about the simplest ESP chip you'll ever see. And junky little relay, three amp relay. Doesn't matter. Doesn't all it's doing is putting these two wires together. Um, current is going to be super minimal. And then power converter over there, and that's it. That's all she wrote. So and it runs to you. So that's gonna be my dad's garage door opener. Don't tell him. Hopefully I get there, get up there and get it installed before Christmas. <laughs> Chamberlain programs like a car opener, no wires required. Okay, so that's probably why you can't just use a, a, a hard a hard wired bypass of the button like I do or like we've done for our garage doors, right? Ah. There you go. There you go. Okay, we're just going to put that back there. All right. That was fun. <laughs> uh, Chamberlain MyQ. How basic that looks inside. Yeah, right? It's called dry contact. What's, what's safer? I'm missing what's going on in the chat. That's okay. Let's go to, let's go see what, which one that is exactly. And I'll just show it to you. To your convert time, that's right. Except for not this one. Not this one because um, I want him to just use the Tuya app. I want my dad to just use the Tuya app. It's just going to be so much easier. Oh, wait. Did he not send them to me? Oh, crud. Who did? It wasn't from It wasn't from Banggood. Oh, gosh. Who was it from? Oh, gosh. If it wasn't from Banggood, then who was it? Shoot. <laughs> Because they're going to want me to do something with it. <laughs> um, that's crazy. Oh, boy. You know what? I'll have to look through my emails and see. <laughs> it's basically this kind of thing. In fact, is that the box? Oh, that's it. Yeah, this is the one. So it's 30 bucks. It's 30 bucks. It's got, you know, the equivalent of a Sonoff Basic here for five bucks. They give you an extension cord, which you can get from the dollar store for a dollar. The reed switch with that much wire, you might pay another dollar for, and then those wires. But then what you're paying for, I suppose, is Tuya. The convenience of being able to do this with Tuya. So if somebody wanted to do this and didn't care about... Um, didn't care about uh, using Tuya or not using Tuya. 
or sorry, didn't care about security. They didn't care about avoiding the cloud. Then you need to use, then they could use this. Fine, whatever. You already did something with it. You broke into <laughs> pieces. Mission accomplished. <laughs> uh, well, there goes my idea for using this footage to, uh, no, actually I can, sure. I'll make a video. I'll figure out who, I didn't really want to make a full video about it. I tell people I can't when they send me an inexpensive device. If you send me something expensive, maybe I'll make a whole video about it, but not this one. Not this one. You're in the wrong line of work. What line of work are you going to get into, Chris? Oh yeah. Selling these. Yeah, for sure. So am I. Like I think about that. So here's, here's my dilemma when it comes to that. Sometimes I look at something like this and go, yeah, I could come up with these things. I could put this together and market it and whatever, right. Or get a team and do that. But then I think, wait a minute, who would I be selling this to? You guys. And I want to do that. I want to sell it to a bunch of people I don't know, <laughs> make a bunch of money off a bunch of people I don't know. That's fine. Um, but for my friends, uh, I wouldn't want to do that. So in, in, so I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing until I can find a way to take some of these crazy projects and sell them to people I don't know. <laughs> then maybe I'll do that. Uh, I need my dad's garage opener to be on home kit because when he saw the new feature in iOS 13, where the garage pops up on CarPlay, as soon as I'm within a hundred meters from home, he said, I want that. Ah, good luck with that, Christian. So actually you're behind Sonoff, right? Wait, what did I say? <laughs> As in the owner inventor? Oh gosh, don't you wish? No, no. Let's send Z's devices hard to take apart. <laughs> $30 is fantastic. What would you pay for it? Either A, ask, take, ask a professional company or B, purchase the local store. Yeah, you know, Richard, it's not, for somebody like my dad, this is not a bad solution. I think he would probably pay 30 bucks or I would pay 30 bucks to buy something like this for him. But, um, for myself, I, I, part of the fun of all this for me is seeing how cheap I can do it. I know I could do it better and sometimes have a better solution for more money, but I'm trying to, I'm playing the balance game to perfection. I want the best combination of function and price to get the best value possible. So um, that's my game at, with this stuff. So I try, I know I could sometimes make things, use more expensive parts, and sometimes it sometimes it pays off. Sometimes it does pay off to use the more expensive stuff. Um, but my challenge and a lot of the fun I have is in trying to find that perfect, perfect value between you know the perfect point of function and, and price. So, and reliability. You're right. You're right. If I was a company right now, I would send the doc a solid, fully printed, sewn off looking case just to see him struggle. <laughs> I like that emoji, Frank. That's cool. Uh, that's that, that's going to be a tough one, Christian. I, I want to see. I, I don't think Tuya stuff works with HomeKit. Um. I don't think EWE link stuff works with home kit. Your Chamberlain, my Q has if this, then that and Google assistant got it for 25 in sale, 10 minute install. Nice app. Nice. I, I think I have, uh, my sister has the, my Q thing, but theirs doesn't have the app, doesn't have the app or it doesn't work with the app or something funny like that. I don't know. Best functions for the smallest budget possible. That's the game. Cause I, I could buy it all. And like I said, I have friends that do with some false seams and clips just to distract him. <laughs> See, the, I've, I've, yeah, I've hurt things. Yeah, I'm sure you all have. You guys have been where I just was. The dang thing starts, starts denying you. I'm gonna throw this screw away. Let the vacuum cleaner get that one. Um, you know, once you, you get determined about something like that, you're not gonna let it go. I'm not gonna put down that plastic box. I don't care if I have to go get the Dremel and cut the bottom off. I'm, I'm getting in there. Um, any suggestions for Z-Wave E12 bulbs? Can't seem to find any. What is, oh, E12 is the, um, that's the socket type, right? I don't know, anybody? Anybody got Z-Wave E12 recommendations for Nicolas? Hated the MyQ garage door module. It was terrible. The strobe light on it. Oh, gosh. And invent a screw that doesn't have a driver. <laughs> and beeps. 
You guys are tortures. Uh, 179 Canadian. When was released? Wow. Jeez. That's why you're doing, that's why you're here, Will, because you just, you didn't want to work with the, the gr expensive stuff. Put it face down on the shelf. You're like me. I love to open things up and see what makes them tick. That's for sure. I think we're all that way. Self-sealing steam bolt. <laughs> a stem bolt. Take Zigbee. Have both. <clears throat> ah, thirsty. A lot of talking. I have not, John, tried the wise sensor integration for hacks. All right, Andy, thanks for being here. Go take care of the wife. Self-sealing stem bolt. Oh, that's a Star Trek reference? I missed that. Was it what which which episode? I really watched a lot of the next generation was the ones I grew up with. Not not any, not much of the older ones and not not many of the movies. The newer movies I liked a lot. Um <clears throat> Oh, Deep Space Nine. Okay. I remember that. I remember that one. Um, are we on to something else? What do you guys uh, think? Huh? Are we on to... Yeehaw! <laughs> I like that guy. He's fun. He's fun, my little squirrel man. Yeah, me too, Arm. Me too. But, you know, for your grandparents or something, right? For your, for your old folks, this isn't so bad. And again, I... Oh, I'm, I'm really bad. Maybe I should... Excuse me, maybe I should look it up real quick and thank the people that sent me this thing because I don't know who they were. <laughs> uh. It might have been Gearbest. Could have been Gearbest. Uh... Is this it? Miros? What's it say on that? Where's that box that I just trashed? <laughs> Where did I put it, guys? How did I lose it? Did it fall on the floor? It's not in the box. Okay, who stole it? Seriously. Oh, here it is. I have too much stuff on my desk. You wonder why I can't find anything here. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Oh. All right. No, this one. This is not the Miros one. No, that lady. Uh... Well, I can get that one too. I can get another one. <laughs> Can the doc open it? <laughs> yeah. Did you guys, do you guys watch uh, the Hacksmith? Do you know who the Hacksmith is on YouTube? He, he, he has a really fun channel. He does um, stuff where he takes the um, things from movies, mostly Marvel, but also video games and such. And he makes things that they have in those, in those games and movies. He makes them real. And that's his sort of tagline is make it real. And, uh, Anyways, because he has all these like weapons and pretty cool things and he makes them so they really work, right? Um, he, there, some other guy, some YouTube guy, I, I don't know if he's already big or if he's trying to grow or what, but he's, he's got this indestructible box with $10,000 in it. And he's, he's calling up these YouTubers that have millions of subscribers and saying, Hey, can I come on your channel and let you try and break into this box? And if you break into it, you get the money. And, uh, so that's, that's what he's that's what he's doing. He's going around doing that. Anyways, he, uh, we watched the one last night where he went to the hacksmith and they used, you know, Thor's hammer and some kind of a sword from Fortnite, I think it was, or Overwatch. I, I don't know, a fist and all this. Uh, anyways, he broke into it. So, um, we could do a segment like that. Yeah. You put, you don't even have to put a thousand dollars or $10,000 in there. I don't even care what's in it. I just, I just, <laughs> just make it, just make it, uh, difficult and I'm all over it. Well, I'm gonna have to find out who op who sent me this garage door. It must have been Gear Best. Anyways, not something to solve on the live stream. I'll figure it out. I'll see who sent it to me. <laughs> Security stuff like good cameras, NVR stuff is the most expensive part. Dometica part. 
What do you think? Um, security stuff, cameras, NVR stuff is the most expensive part. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. I mean, the cameras, you can go, the cheapest you can go is probably wise cams, 25 bucks or something like that. But, um, you, you're losing some functionality there for another 20, for another 25 for in the $50 range, you can get some pretty good cameras indoor or outdoor pan tilt, you know, uh, 4k resolution, that kind of stuff. But then when you start getting the NVR, yeah, because like for me running blue Iris, it, you know, I'm running it on this big fancy windows computer. That's 1200 bucks or something. I don't remember what it cost now, but, um, and, and I would like, I wish you could take an NVR like some of these companies have and run blue Iris on that. Is there any way to do that? Like some, like how about a POE switch that is, um, that essentially runs windows and can handle blue iris. Can I have that please? I have two POE cameras now that I don't, and I still don't have a switch. I know you, you don't have to start throwing money. I know J after dark and some of the other guys I know have thrown a couple dollars every time I say I don't have a POE switch, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I still don't. And I would like to get one. And I can ask, you know, I can get one from Banggood or I can get one from some of these other companies, um, an NVR, but I don't want to run their software. I want to, and I don't always want to keep running um, Blue Iris on this computer that I'm on right now because uh, I want it for other things. And that we've seen what happens sometimes when I run Blue Iris and try and stream, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I still haven't used any HickVision. HickVision's, HickVision's expensive, I, I feel like, but. After you've fixed and cleaned your config, you can buy some Unify gear. Somebody was just asking me about that. Uh, somebody was messaging me on Discord and asking me their recommendations for router stuff, and I told them Unify. I totally told them Unify. Cisco 48 port PoE. Man, is it loud. Yeah, that's the other thing, John, is I've got a I've got a room in the basement where I could put things like that. I could put an NVR. It doesn't matter if it makes noise. It doesn't matter if it makes heat. It's all going to be stuck down there. Why not spin up a Linux box? I may. I, I've thought about that, Chris. I thought maybe the thing to do is to buy, you know, go to one of these. We have a, you know, the University of Utah has a surplus place where when they get rid of old computers and things, they take them there to sell them for a discount. And so you can go in there and get, you know, computers that they're throwing away, not throwing away, but, you know, they're, they're, they've are they replaced. And some of them are still decent. You could probably find an i7. You could probably find you know, something in there. Maybe you'd have to add some RAM or something. It probably already has windows on it. So that might be a good option. And that would probably be a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks, something like that. Blue Iris. Oh, you could do, yeah. I mean, I could put it on Linux and then windows VM, sure, whichever, but I just want to, DIY people, you got to watch the voltage. Yeah. Cause it's 48 volts. Proxmox Blue Iris is VM is where I'm thinking. I'm heading. Yeah. If my, if my, um, I, Ty gave me my, um, my, uh, nook and I love it and it's great for running home assistant. But uh, the reason that I, one of the reasons I went to blue iris was because it was struggling with motion eye and, uh, and seeing how much CPU power and such the uh, blue iris uses on my fancy windows computer. Um, it would be, it would not run blue iris very well. I don't think it's an I three and stuff. Where am I in Utah? I am in, um, Alpine, which is North Utah County. Speaking of let's chat for something else. Let's chat about something else for a minute. Cause it's been like 10 minutes. We've been on the same topic. Can't have that happen. <laughs> uh, make your fair. So I have a problem. Well, I have several, but the problem that I have is that uh, I signed up for a booth at the Maker Fair again at Thanksgiving Point, which is a few miles from my house. I drive past this every day going to work and back. And I love this place and I'm glad that they're having a Maker Fair. Last year was the first one. That was when we did that dragon game thing for the kids. And um, so I want to support them. So I want to be there again. Well, it turns out that's on September 21st. And I signed up already to have a booth. Then I found out that uh, that's the same weekend as a YouTube conference that's here in town called CVX, which I went to last year and I signed up for again and I would like to go. 
Um, but I think I would choose the Maker Fair over that because that's a two-day thing. So fine, but whatever, it's a conflict. I'm actually working that day. That's a bigger deal. And then I found out that I have a meeting for work that I can't miss that day. So there's essentially no way that I can make the Maker Fair. But Dr. Z's has a booth at the Maker Fair. If any of you are anywhere in the vicinity and would be willing or, or would love to help put together something for the Maker Fair or take what I already have or just, I don't know, if anybody wants to represent us <laughs> at the Maker Fair at Thanksgiving Point, let me know um, because if I can't, uh, you know, get somebody to or get some get something to present, then I'm just going to have to back out. Not not the end of the world. I think they'll do fine. Sorry, right? they're not relying on me or anything. But I wanted to help, and I'm not going to be able to help. So, anyways, there you go. That was that. Now on to other distractions. <laughs> Volumio two. I have not heard of Volumio two. What what what's up, Ati boy, Outy boy? Oh, is that like like Audi? Yeah. Oh, Outy boy robotics. What about Volumio two? Was that was I using Volumio two or was it one? I can't remember now. Maybe time to three D print some copies of yourself. Yeah, I wish, man. I wish. I've reproduced myself multiple times, but none of them are old enough to man the Maker Fair on their own. <laughs> Let Frank do it. Yeah, come on over. Maker Fair with a garage opener? Sure, sure. I've got a wall. You know, I, I would love, I love these Maker Fairs. You know, these these are full of the kind of people that we are. If you've never been to a Maker Fair, you should really try it out. Go, go see. It's a lot of fun. And it's for, it's, it's for people like us. It's by people like us. The first time I went to a Maker Fair, uh, that was the first time I really realized that there were a whole lot of other people like me that that wanted that whose minds thought like mine and want and wanted to do things just for the sake of doing them what's up buddy you need um, some help do you have a screwdriver that's strong enough to do uh yeah i think so oh you guys are gonna play those yeah okay and when you're done with yeah it works just because the screw is small doesn't always mean the screwdriver needs to be small Sometimes, and that's a, that's not the right kind of screw at all. Okay. Um, and then when you're done, would you put that back out in the garage? That's okay. supposed to be in the garage. Okay. Anyways, wish I was closer to help out. Australia's a bit far away. Yeah, I know. I, no problem. Just a plane ticket away. I'll drive up right after work. <laughs> Mini statue. I could, you know what I still need to do? Now's the time to do it. Um, I need to 3D print my, my bust, my head, right? Remember that from the... CES, me and me and um, me and Rob and Tom got our got ourselves 3D scanned, and uh, I I still haven't printed mine. I need to print it. I'm going to do it soon. Um, all right. So the question was about Bluetooth speakers with Volumio, and then I it's gone again. Autism Boy Robotics. Oh, cool. I thought it was Audi like Audi the car. Autism Boy Robotics. That's awesome. You know, there certainly is. There's a lot of people um, that that have autism or something along those lines that are drawn to our kinds of things, robotics, electronics. Um, it's a comfortable place. So that's cool, man. Very cool. What? Do you know if we have these batteries? Uh... Do I know if we have those batteries? I don't know if we do or not. Probably not. If we have any of them, the only place you can look down where the batteries are down there and see if there are. If there's not, we'll have to get some tomorrow. Thank you. Love you. Oh, do you use Bluetooth speakers with your Volumio install? I don't, and I'm trying to remember. I don't recall. I, I, um, we could look and see. I don't remember if my, I don't remember... Isn't that funny? I have to, I think I remember my Volumio. Yeah, see? Um, am I using version one or two? I don't even know. System version 2.5. So I, when we connect speakers, I don't remember. 
Sorry, man. You know, I, what did you find when you Googled? I hate to say just go Google it, but that, that's what I would do right now because I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. If any company is watching, I can do add-ons and integrations for your printer. Contact me to get rid of a 3D printer for free. <laughs> Frank, you could get, have you, have you tried uh, your Banggood buddy? They'll send you one. They'll send you an Ender 3, I'm sure. In fact, let's talk about that now. I don't, I don't want to brush off the Volumio thing. I think that's a great question. I don't remember if it, use, if it can connect to Bluetooth speakers or not. I wish I did, and I'm sorry I don't have the answer. I'm, I wish I did. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't like not having the answer. Uh, <laughs> shameless promotion by Frank. I love it, Frank. Be do it, man. Get all you can get. Let's go back to Banggood for a minute, and let's look at this other thing that... Uh, I have sitting over here in a pile, which uh, I opened up upside down. <laughs> it's this guy right here. This guy. Portable, three axis, mini DIY, CNC router, adjustable speed, spindle motor, wood engraving machine, milling engraver. So I have this thing and I am very excited to try it out, put it together. I'm not expecting stellar results, but it should be something worth having and worth doing some cool stuff with. So I've got it over here. It's in parts, like total parts. Um, and like I said, I opened the box upside down. So they're not even in contain. They're not even in compartments anymore. They're just in a pile. Um, but I need to, uh, I need to do this. This will be a green bar. This will be a green bar video. You know, where I put the green bar on the side and just say, Hey, this is just a product I'm using that somebody sent me. So pretty cool, right? I think Banggood is no longer happy with me after I send them home with their expensive ESP-01s. <laughs> Tell them you can, they can still send you free stuff. I, I still, I always make sure to um, have Banggood links along with whatever I post. But I also have AliExpress links. I also have Amazon links. So, you like the router thing? I, I'm excited about it. <laughs> after I put it together, I have to answer the the age old wife question. And that is, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> How many of you have heard that before? What are you going to do with that? <laughs> yeah. If you get a copper PCB plate, you can use that CNC machine to etch it. Oh, cool. Like build an Ender 3. Since the last update, my AC stopped working with Smart IR. Can you explain how to get it working again? Okay, I don't. I, I don't know about Smart IR, Victor. Was there a change with Smart IR? I know that the climate component changed a lot. So how you manage your thermostats in Home Assistant, both in the configuration and in the automations, changed, and you need to make some changes to that um, to get it to work. So is that the problem potentially, or is smart IR, is it because of your remote that it's not working? I would first try the, uh, the, the component, the climate component pages and see, let me know. Let's keep talking about it because I can show you what mine look like now and you can see if they're different and maybe that's what you need to change piece of aluminum and make it her trinket for her keychain. That's what I'm going to see. That's what brilliant, brilliant. You guys are awesome. Fat Lake. Fat Lake, it's been a little while since we had zebras, so let's get some zebras for you. Thanks for subscribing, my friend. That's a great idea. Marco. No, oh, is it Marco? No. Stone. Stolen VW. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. How's it going? I recognize your name now. <laughs> I've seen you here before. You've been here a lot. Um, if you get something like this or a 3D printer or whatever you get and you get that, well, what are you going to do with that? The first thing you need to do is make something for her, right? Those are unicorns, not zebras. Did I say zebras? Did I say zebras? Where's my mind? Maybe because I went to bed at four in the morning. <laughs> it would be simpler than building an Ender 3. It might not be too bad. It might not be too bad to build. <laughs> um, how do you play a specific playlist in Apple TV from Hass.io? with an automation. Anybody know? I don't have an Apple TV, Marco. I wish I could tell you. 
Maybe somebody else does. You guys know how to make a, how to play a playlist with Apple TV from an automation? It'll be a little tricky, I'm sure. Um, I wish I could tell you, man. I'm sorry. That's again, strike two. Strike two for Z's. Z's is striking out today. Can you tell us how to get eWeLink working with Home Assistant without flashing Tasmode? Sure. There's a, um, the, the easy thing to do is use the um, eWeLink custom component. Do you guys know if it's still working? Okay, if you have time, feel free to give it a try. Most of the details are already laid out. So here we go. And I'm let's look down here and see. Here's the here's the link for you. Uh-oh. All I saw was something about divorce. Okay, so here's how you set it up. Completely deactivated the Sonoff Component from as well. Doing a firmware update due to an auto re-login function, you might be kicked out of the app before the process is complete. I would not be held liable for any problems occurring if not following these steps. Okay. It sounds like it's not as easy as it used to be. Check compatibility list. Try the component first. If it doesn't work for your device, don't complain and open a proper issue. <laughs> yes, be kind. Be kind. That's a reminder. I, I think you guys that are here listening are probably all um, good, good uh, citizens uh, as far as developers and such go. But always be kind. These these folks who put together stuff like this, like Frank and a bunch of others, many of you probably too, spend a lot of time to put this all together to, to try and explain it to somebody. Their job, what they do, is a lot harder than what I do. This this is easy. That's hard. And um, so it's it's a bummer when when people, you know, get upset about it. They're like, oh, this thing doesn't work, piece of crap. You know, and they get kind of aggressive. It's, you're not buying anything. You're using somebody's somebody's hobby project, which they gave you access to for free. So be cordial in your correspondence. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. All right. Um, uh, I, what I'm wondering is if, so here's a compatibility list. I'm wondering if he has put it into the community page, the community store on home assistant. Should we see? Let's see if it's here. Uh, does that mean no? <laughs> Let's try eWe Link. Nope, nope. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look like it. Nothing for Sonoff, nothing for eWe Link. I think if if it was, oops, if it was there, it, he would probably say something about it here. So, but uh, basically, he'll give you the instructions here. I used it. I I used it just to see how it would work, and it worked fine. Um, so copy the files in the custom components folder using the same structure defined here. So you have to have in your custom components folder, you have a folder called Sonoff, and then you take his files, which are init py, switch py, and sensor py, and you put them in your Sonoff um, folder. And then you put something like this in your configuration file, and then you restart, and that should do it. You do have to have set up your... Uh, your devices with the app first because every time you because this is going to go through the app so it'll go from home assistant to Sonoff servers back to home assistant to do whatever it is you want to do okay got it good hate autocorrect all right what did I miss in there now not divorced yet I got her approval for me to keep the printer <laughs> good Chris good Congratulations on getting to keep the printer. <laughs> Victor can't control his AC in Home Assistant with the Broadlink Mini 3. Hmm, so your AC has an infrared remote with it? How far have you gotten in the process, Victor? I, I warn you, I haven't played with the Mini 3 much since I did the video, <laughs> which was like last summer. Um... I don't use it either, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know, maybe things have changed, but tell us where you're at and, you know, with some luck, we'll be able to point you in the right direction. Otherwise, I'll have, that'll be my third. Sorry, I can't help you strike for this stream and that'll be bad. That'll be a new low. 
That was very helpful. When I tried to set up, I couldn't find the custom components folder. Is that normal or do I need to add it myself? If it's not there, just add it. Um, it might not be there. So in your, in your config, so this is my home assistant box. You have a config folder and here's where you have all your regular stuff, your configuration.yaml, your automations and such. And if there's not a folder there, it's probably just because you don't have any custom components yet. You just haven't installed any custom components at all yet. So you just need that custom components folder. And then inside of it, you can put, there you go. See, I do have it installed still. Well, actually it looks like I have an old version because I don't have the init and I don't have the sensor.py. So yeah, you can make the folder. That's the, that's the short answer. Missed the stream start alert. Walked into a tongue lashing aimed at whiners. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are you at work, Joe? Tongue lashing aimed at whiners. Oh, I see. No, I'm sorry. It was, oh, I, I, sorry. <laughs> I was giving the tongue lashing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be nice to those developers. Gosh. <laughs> Did my integration. Oh. Oh, I changed it, Seamus. I changed it to, I changed it to she who shall not be named. <laughs> we'll do that, though. We'll do it, Seamus. Computer, tell me a joke. Alexa, tell me a joke. Now it's on all of you. You all get the joke. <laughs> I don't know. Peter polyester tail. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Seamus. I appreciate it, my friend. Yeah, I changed it because I was working on, I was working with the kids in here. We were resurrecting some of these old computers. Uh, I, was, I was chatting with some of you guys about that in the past. These I had a couple of old iMacs and, and an old laptop and me and the kids were resurrecting them. And, um, so we were constantly saying computer, 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 computer. And I got tired of having to not say computer. And so I changed it to the A word. <laughs> yes, I agree with you, Alan. You know what? That's a good, you are right about that as well, Alan. And I will, now I'll chastise back, right? Now I'll finger wag at the developers as well. Be kind in your responses. Not everybody knows as much as you do. And, um, and it's, it's, I understand it's frustrating. Trust me. I know, <laughs> I know, right. I get it. I get the people who ask questions that, uh, the, that they may, you may have already said the answer. The answer may be right in front of them. And it is very simple. It's easy to respond with something sharp with, we'll just look it up. And, um, while that might be the right answer, go look it up might be the right answer. How you say, go look it up is, um, what matters. So we can be cordial to each other. We can speak kindly to each other. And so there you go. What do you call a deer with no eyes, no legs, and no balls? Oh, gosh. I don't know, Seamus. <laughs> what What do we call them? No, no eyes, no legs, and no balls? I don't know. No idea? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Oh, very good. Very good. That was backwards. We got the punchline before. <laughs> um, what sets me up the most, if people ask questions about stuff that is just written in plain English in the manual. Yeah. If you point to it, they go, ah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's hard to walk the line, but I, uh, as long as we're being cordial to each other, you know, there's a, there's a nice way to say, go look in the docs and, and you, and you should, if you are, looking for help. If you're going to somebody to find help, um, you know, make sure you've done a, go a Google search first. I had a, vi I had this in a video once I, I made this comment in a video a year ago or something. Um, you know, if before you, before you post an issue, before you complain, before you ask for help, make sure you've done your homework. You know, don't, don't ask somebody to give you the answer to a question that you can very easily answer yourself. Yeah. Um, Sometimes the manuals are hard. Yep. But, it, and then, and then we're not saying that if you can't understand it, because it, that's different. If you've tried, if you've looked at it and you're like, I, I don't know what this means then. And when I ask a question, cause I still do, I still ask lots of questions. Um, I ask lots of questions and, and what I do is I try and explain 
with my question what I've already done. That helps. That helps the person who's who's looking at your question and trying to decide, is this a question that I can answer? How much time is this going to take? Um, you know, is this person going to going to be a, a help vampire? <laughs> it's a phrase I learned a while back, a help vampire. And that's somebody who's just always, always, always needing somebody else to answer everything for them and do everything for them. Um, you want to show what you've already done, how, how much effort you've already put into trying to solve the problem. Cause not having the answers is not a crime. Not understanding the documents is not a crime. Um, but just saying, Hey, I want to do this thing and I don't have any idea. Can you tell me? I mean, that that's okay. If then, if you're all right with the answer of here, read this or go watch this or something like that. So we've sure gotten into an interesting discussion today, haven't we? <laughs> Some people learn better from audiovisual than written instructions. That's the truth. I think one of the things that has been, that I've been, um, one of the reasons that I, that people watch videos I do is because I often can read the documents and understand them. We've tried nothing. We're all out of ideas. Oh my gosh, Frank is just destroying me. This is the best post ever. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. Yeah. Okay. The This is not a help desk. The people here do not work for Home Assistant. This is an open source project. We are volunteering our free time to help others. Not all topics may get an answer. Never mind one that helps you solve your problem. Post in the forum. Read the docs. <laughs> yeah. This is also a general home automation forum. Search. How do I research? How do I find a similar topic? Yeah, this is good. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to bookmark this. Help us help you. Put that in the faves. <laughs> All right. I want to move on to another topic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get anybody heated. There's some really good pointers here on how to ask questions. That's great. This is this is important. This is important. There have been a couple in my how long have I been how long have I been doing this particular thing now? It's been it's been over two years. Two and a half, maybe. There have only been a couple of times where I had to just cut somebody off. Where I was like, man, I cannot help you anymore. I'm sorry, I can't. I I have spent too much time doing it, and I and you know I've pointed you in the right direction. You just need to spread your wings and fly, little eagle. <laughs> um, it is all about tone. That's very good. Google then forums is my approach. Yeah, Google forums. You know, if I can find docs, that's the way to go. I, of course, I'm a video guy. I like going to videos and seeing what's there. Um, has anyone used ESP Home for hol holiday LEDs? Quindor has. Mark? Yes. Yes, Quindor has. Quindor has. Did I did I post a link for that, Frank? P post a link to that in the, in the hole for everybody. Post a link to that for everybody. Please. Uh, so Quindor has a new board. Did we talk about this on a previous stream? I think I thought we did. He has a new board. It's this guy right here. It's the digital. It's his first. Oh, it's his first uh, digital control board. Eswarin, thank you, my friend. Good man, you are. Thank you very much. Hopefully, you get a little. Hopefully, you get to say something. Um, this is uh, Quindor's digital board. Did you say a message? Oh man. Well, thanks, S. Warren. Here, I'll show that so you get to see through Super Chat. Thank you, my friend. Uh, this is the this is a digital control board. So a lot of his boards, they've been um, just for dimming, right? This one can actually control the WS2812 and such kinds of programmable LED boards. Um, and he's He's got sketches. What did I miss again? Chris Bond subscribed. Yay, Chris. Thank you, sir. Um, he has some of his sketches here. He's got some of his ESP Home sketches here. And I'm trying to see where they are. I had trouble getting it to work, though. I had trouble getting it to work. And so, and, and then in the process, I think I destroyed my, my ESP uh, or my my 
uh, ESP32 <laughs> that was set to control it. Now it's it goes into panic mode. You guys know what that means? I don't know what that even means. I try and flash it. It just goes to panic. Oh, come on, buddy. Where's your stuff? I know, I, I know it's around. Oh, I can probably find it in Discord. You guys are right if I take a minute and look for this? I'm not going to read chat for a minute. Here, sample configurations. All right, so this is what he has done with his, with this board using ESP Home. So I will post this here and what you can get out of this. It, in fact, did I do something with ESP Home in these? I think I might have as well. YouTuber done Facebook or TensorFlow Home Assistant tutorials. Any YouTuber Facebox or TensorFlow Home Assistant tutorials? I don't know. Does anybody know if there's been Facebox or TensorFlow tutorials for Home Assistant? I don't think so, Swarn. I've looked at both of those and uh, at the at the times I looked at them, they were more complicated than what I was willing to put in for effort at the time. So I would like to. For those, for if you, if you guys don't know what TensorFlow or Facebox is, they're, they're uh, facial recognition things. And so as Warren's asking, has anybody, has anybody done anything about that on YouTube? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, so anyways, this, this basically what you need is this. Oh yeah. You know why I've done it, <laughs> but I haven't posted it. I did it for that garage door version four garage door opener, which I haven't finished, but yeah, you can do some stuff and there are some, there's a couple different libraries, fast led and NeoPixel. Uh, and the NeoPixel library you can use. I don't know what this one is. Fast LED Spy. I don't know what that one's about. Anyways, you got those there. You can start. That's some, some configurations you can poke at and probably find some stuff. Internet is super slow. Have to watch this video later. All right, Bashar. Thanks for being here, man. Never seen Facebook or TensorFlow tutorial. Would be good to see some. Yeah. And that's one of those that you probably haven't seen it because... It's pretty hard to understand, I think, or to get working. But uh, I won't promise you that I'll, that I'll be able to get to it. <laughs> you never know. Think, you know, different things have have uh, different things pop up at different times um, and take priority. I did not think that I was going to be doing, you know, stopping everything else I was doing to do Sonoff mini videos and stuff this week, but I did. Bread is baking and the smell is amazing. Bread maker isn't on Home Assistant though, so room for improvement. That's right. I where did I see that? I saw some kind of smart gadget thing where, where somebody had that. Maybe it was CES. All right. Thanks for subscribing. Let's do this. We'll do the unicorns again. I, ha I haven't uh, I haven't changed that hamster dance song. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I think it was CES. Maybe there was a bread maker like that, that that did, you know, you set it for a certain time and you put the ingredients in and then it would just dump certain things in at certain times and cook for you or whatever. Hasei was on Linux is down to zero bytes. What would be best way to clone a Linux drive? Nigel says, what would be the best way to clone a Linux drive? What do you guys think? I don't use it enough. Didn't Rob do a holiday light video? He did, but I don't think he did one with the ESP Home. He's done a couple. He's done a couple good um, holiday light videos. I need to redo some more holiday light stuff. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. DD. There you go. DD. Is that like GG in the Linux world? DD. <laughs> All right. Um, I had one more thing that I wanted to talk about, um, but then we're going to probably get ready to sign off. We've been at this for almost two hours. Time's just flying by. Too much fun today. Too much good stuff going on. Um, the other thing I will introduce, I'll introduce, but we don't, we won't get too far into it. I'll do it on things. Oh, thanks. Oh, cool. Diogo, how did you do that? That's really awesome. We'll see. Hopefully that'll show up somehow. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. We're going to have to do something fun for you. Let's do... Oh, cover your ears, everybody. This is for Warren and Diogo. And uh, who else? There was somebody else that had another... Oh, it was Seamus. Wanted to play me a joke. Here you go. Cover your ears. <laughs> I love that. That's a good time. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Plus one for holiday lights. Need to get ready. Yeah. Now's a good time to start, right? Now's a good time to start. Um, 
I gotta, it seems like every, it seems like every couple of weeks I, I have to redo my priority list of, okay, what videos am I going to do next? Or what projects am I going to do next? Um, I'm, I'm, you are so, you're so welcome. <laughs> uh, the, the bug, we haven't talked about the bug in a long time. Um, but the bug is making progress. I unfortunately still haven't heard back from my battery guy. There's a guy that in a Chinese company that's going to make me a battery that I need to hear back from. So here's, this is, this is a picture that probably nobody can decipher without me telling you what it is. So let me tell you what it is. <laughs> what you see here are the two, uh, I guess we're going to call them couplings. I don't know. This is the gears, the two gears I create, I use to create the coupling. So back here, this is the transmission on the Volkswagen. This little silver lining here is the gear from the clutch on the Volkswagen. This gear here, the closer one to us, is from the motor on the, on the forklift motor. This shaft that you see poking out the middle here, this is the input transmission shaft on the bug transmission. So here's the problem. Can you see the problem? The problem is the motor has a gear like this. Actually, I see two problems now because that doesn't look like it's in the middle. <laughs> I think that's the angle though, just the camera lens. But uh, this gear is not going to be able to go down this, down into this uh, spline here, whatever, because this dang transmission thing is in the way. So what the heck? And I kind of knew that was going to happen. And so what I was about to do what I was on the verge of doing. I seriously was getting out the cutter. I was going to cut this transmission shaft and that would have probably been fine because I don't think I'll ever use that transmission for a different motor. But even if I, but if I wanted to, I would be screwed. I'd be buying a new transmission for 500 for a used, maybe a thousand dollars if I had to buy a rebuilt transmission. Yeah, I was going to cut it, Gary. I was ready. I was going to chop it off. Here's what saved me. My good, my good boy, Zach, he's 14 or 15 now. He's got a very mechanical mind. Um, he's the one that helped me not realize I didn't, anyways, how to do the van seats, but that's another story. Um, can't get too distracted too fast. Uh, what he said was, dad, why don't you just drill out the center of the gear for the, um, on the, on the, the gear that's on the motor because it already had a hole. It already has a hole in it and it has threads in it. And I know I'm never going to thread that back on there. And that motor cost me 200 bucks. So if I had to replace that motor, if I do screw it up and I had to replace that motor, that's cheaper than having to replace the transmission. So in the mail today, and it should arrive before I go to bed, hopefully, uh, is a 16 millimeter bit, 16 millimeter um, high, whatever you call it, high steel, whatever, high speed steel, whatever. So that I'm going to drill down the center of the gear on the motor shaft. And that should, this is a 15 millimeter, uh, this is 15 millimeters. I'm going to go down with a 16 millimeter drill bit. So I should hopefully have enough room to slide the gear on there and leave this thing inside the gear. That's going to do two things for me. One, it's going to make it so that I can keep my transmission in normal shape so I can reuse it if I want to. Two, it's also going to help me line up the centers. These are lined up pretty well, these two gears, because I, uh, I made a 3D printed guide and I had the guide in there when I welded the this part around the outside. So the centers are lined up pretty well, but having that shaft down the middle is just going to be that much stronger. So yeah, Alan, see, I should have asked you. I was I was this close. I had my Dremel because I was going to I was going to have to reach in there. I couldn't get my I had my big uh my big chop, uh, what do you call it? The sawzall. I had my grinder. I'm like, how am I going to get in there? And then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get the Dremel and get a couple of those cutoff bits and just cut down and, and I should be able to saw that thing off. Um, and sure enough, I'd be concerned that the shaft would be weak with all that torque. It might be. Yeah, it might, it might've, it might have been cause we would have decreased the number of, uh, oh, you mean you're, you're concerned that this shaft would be too weak with all the torque? Oh, maybe. Well, you know what's funny? This, if you're talking about this, Father Time, I'm not exactly sure which one you're talking about, but the the gear for the um, the gear for the motor has a lot more teeth and a lot more surface area than the 
than the gear on the on the um, on the bug transmission. The gear on the bug transmission has really small teeth, and if anything's going to strip out, I think it would be that. If anything's not going to make it, I think it would be that. But would also damp the shock on pulling away. Damp the shock on pulling away. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like when you're when you're starting out, we should have used a rubber donut to space them. Yeah, that would have probably been a good idea. Piston broke. I thought about that afterwards as well, but maybe next time. Iron swol, iron slowable, iron too slowable. <laughs> Let's give you where score. We haven't done this one in a while. What year's the bug? 1970. The Dremel would have taken a long time. Yeah, it probably would have. It probably would have. But I've got a whole bunch of bits. <laughs> Did I say 75? It's 1970. 1970. I need to go. I need to get to. I need to get to bed. It's nap time. But I'm having so much fun. And this wasn't even what I was going to talk about. <laughs> this this wasn't the thing I was going to talk about. The last thing I was going to talk about is is was our. Uh, I have now in my possession from the same people who sent me the this garage door opener. So I, th I really thought it was really thought it was uh, really thought it was Woody. <laughs> Whoops. They sent me the, uh, this is the Tuya equivalent of the Aquara stuff. Alan has the same age as you. That's five years older than me. <laughs> I'll be 45, 45 in next month. But what I've got here is, uh, this is the Tuya Zigbee hub, basically. This is the Tuya Zigbee hub right here. Tuya Zigbee gateway. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the hub part. I might, maybe I'll give that to my dad too. Uh, motion sensor, temperature and humidity sensor, door and window sensor. And I'm sure with decons and the combi stick, I can just add those in just like I did the, the Aquara stuff. So I'm very excited about this. Um, I wish I had more of them, but I, that, I mean, I haven't even used all the, Aquara ones I have. I've got this. The Aquara ones are all still sitting in this bin. <laughs> I haven't installed them. But anyways, should we try it? Let's try it real quick. Okay. Frank says try it. And I'm a sucker for whatever Frank tells me to do. Okay. I'm like, why, why is that still up there? It's because it's over here. All right. We're going to go to Home Assistant. That's not Home Assistant. That is. <laughs> we're going to go to HasIO. And we're going to go to... Decons. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to do was um, Grafana and stuff since I had Frank here. So much tech, so little time. That's the truth. All right. We'll have to do, we're going to have to do the, um, I need to, I need to set up Influx DB or figure out why my Influx DB and Grafana aren't connecting. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going wrong, but anyways, I haven't all, I haven't figured, I haven't finished figuring it out, but uh, anyways. All right. So let's go to Decons. We're going to open the web UI. That's my Decons bridge right there. I don't need to create a group. I'm going to go to edit, right? Come on, edit. Hello. Is it up here? Oh, sorry. Sensors. There we go. All right. Add new sensor. And I'm guessing this is going to be an other. So we'll start. Let's start with the motion sensor. Other. Okay. Searching for a device. I'm going to hold this down a few seconds. I don't know. I didn't follow the instructions at all. Hopefully it's not like, I see a little light come on in there. Yeah. It probably tells me in the instructions what to do with this thing and you may have to hold it for a minute. Oh, there it goes. Now it started blinking. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Door and window sensor. I totally just chucked all the instructions. All right, we're going to do this again. I'm going to go back. Other.
All right, let's see what the instructions say to do. It's not recognizing it right away. Preparation for use. Once the device has been successful, okay. Press and hold the reset button for five seconds until the network indicator light begins flashing. So that's what it should be, it should do. Let's try and get it flashing again. Okay, it's flashing. Mm-hmm. Take it apart. <laughs> Read the manual. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, perfect time of the post form would help. Yeah, let me go back to that real quick and look at the instructions. All right, let's try another one. Let's try a different one real quick. Same thing. Hold this. Flashing, letting go. Is it really Zigbee? It's supposed to be. It says Zigbee. It says Zigbee, but I agree. That would be the question, right? Let's try it again. Try this one. I don't know. I'm gonna keep trying them all. I'm going to just get them all flashing. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it's not finding them. It's not finding them. Huh. Other ideas? Change to Zigbee to MQTT. Well, this with the decons, with decons in the, in the combi, it should work. Real men don't read instructions. I wonder why it stopped flashing though. Do I need to keep holding it? Let's just try keep holding it. Too far away? Have support for them yet. They use the weird custom stuff in the protocol. Oh, really? Oh, that sucks. So does that mean, here's the question then. Computer says no. What'd you say, Alan? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, they'll go to sleep. Not enough juice. Probably Chinese Zigbees. That's why they're not working. <laughs> and they only flash for a second. So what I'm going to have to do then is I'll have to set up this. I'll have to set up the Zigbee hub, or this up this hub thing, and uh, and try them that way. So, darn it. Okay. Well, now we know. So decons doesn't doesn't. Uh, did you look that up real quick, Frank? Got the Combi 2 and set it up in hopes to get away from the Xiaomi hub. I have the motion sensor and door sensor working correctly, but for the life of me, can't get the buttons to work. Um, the buttons work as events. So on, a, on one of the live streams we just did, Frank walked me through this, and I apologize for the sound at the time. Um, I went back to watch it, and it and it was it's really hard to listen to because I didn't have Frank on. Oh, look at that thumbnail. <laughs> if you go back here... Um, a couple, let's see, it was probably, it's not that one. It's probably this one is my guess. I would go back to this one and see um, if this is the one where Frank was on. So I think it probably was. Anyways, you the buttons show up as events. So, so uh, but we do, we do walk through it. Yeah, yeah, it's this one. So I'll give you the link real quick here. Da, 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 why can't I share the link? What the heck? What the heck? this one. Oh my gosh, come on. Is it in theater mode? What's going on? Oh my gosh. Somebody help this guy. I just want the link. Default view. It's because it's too small or too big or something. There, share. Gosh, that's all I was looking for was the share button. For Pete's sake. I 
I muted YouTube. Yeah, it's loud. It's it's hard to watch. I can't. I don't want to watch it on the stream. <laughs> but you can do it. Um, we should prepare next time. Let's do. Let's do it again, Frank. And let's let's do it again. I want to do. Um, well, we'll have you on for something, whether we have you on for that or not. But let's. I want to. Um, what I was gonna do was, I was hoping I could chop that up and put it out, but I can't. So what we'll have to do, we can do it again for another live stream. Let's plan it. You want to do it like next week or the week after something like that. And let's, let's do it together and um, we'll record it and we'll um, make a video out of it. Cause that's what I was going to do. I was going to make a video out of that and I couldn't. So now what I was thinking is I'll go back and undo it, uninstall it, and then go through the process again, make a video about it and prepare it for real. Like you're saying, cause that's, that's very useful for people. Um, any word, sorry about that. Any word on, Combi supporting or decons supporting this to you, Zigbee? Because I was really hoping that they would. Um, and if they don't, then that might be a good excuse for me to build an MQT, uh, Zigbee to MQTT bridge if they will. Ever spring contact sensors, eBay. All right, Clio Studios. Okay. Fellas, let's do one more zebras, zunicorns. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do this. Thanks for subscribing, and then we're gonna start the giveaways, and we'll get the kids up here. Oh, what? oh good timing. Hi, baby. It's no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> not yet. Give us a few minutes. Give us a few minutes. <laughs> Testing Zigbee MT is something you should try. I, I should try it. I should try it, and we'll see if it'll work. Um, all right. Oops, that's not the right one. Bautissimo. The reason I said it's not quite time yet is because we need a few minutes for people to sign up for the giveaway before we do that part. <laughs> so you went running down there uh, before I was ready. What's today? August? August 20th. August 3rd? 4th? Well, August... I think it's 3rd. Wait, so it's August... <laughs> Alexa, what's the date for today? Okay. August 4th. August 4th? Oh, well. Close enough. All right. Exclamation point enter to went to enter. <laughs> and I did do, uh, finally figured out, this, this is ridiculous how dumb this was or how hard this was, but I finally figured out how to transfer things from a Google sheet to um, mailing labels. So I've got, and that's coming in the mail. I don't, I think the mailing labels don't arrive till tomorrow, but the mailing labels are going to arrive. And so my two month backlog of stickers, including my Patreon folks, if you, any of you are here, um, I will actually start getting those things in the mail again very soon. And then from now on, hopefully it'll be faster. Now that I've got stickers pre-printed and I can just throw them in an envelope and shoot them out, um, that'll be better than, than waiting for me to print them on my, on my Cricut printer. Although I, w I think I'll still print some of them on the Cricut printer. The one that just says Dr. Z's and, and it's, um, you know, in that uh, Lord of the Rings script. But the, the I've got a big home assistant sticker and a small um, Z's logo, Dr. Z's logo thing. So cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's do it. Oh, my gosh. 86 like that. You guys are on it. Nobody's wasting any time today. Freak, freak tech, FPV is FPV for first personal first person view. You thanks for subscribing, my friend. I uh, that's one thing that I started to get into a couple years ago. About the same time I was starting to get into uh, automation, home automation stuff, and I put it aside. But first person view, drone flying. I have one of those little tiny whoops, you know, those little bitty ones. Um, it's a lot of fun. I was just starting to get good at it, and then Zoe said. Hey dad, why don't we put some lights on the house that can be pink and green? And I said, that's a great idea. And you know, the rest, <laughs> the rest is history. We covered a lot today. That was good. It's a great stream. It was a really good stream. Um, I'll try and get, I'm going to get with Andres and see when he can join me. And, uh, like I said, he's eight hours ahead of me. So we might do it. Uh, what's, what's your status, Frank? You going to do Friday? You'll probably be you'll probably be back to schedule on Friday. I would expect. Um, if if otherwise, I think I'll do 
when would be a good, I guess I could try and do them next Sunday with that. I mean, that's a good time for me and it shouldn't be too late for him. I might do it just a little bit earlier. I can't do too much earlier unless we do it like several hours earlier. FPV gets expensive. I have a few tiny whoops and a few five inch. Oh, nice. Yeah, it does get expensive. I just wanted like one good one that I could take really good pictures with. But anyways, uh, I don't know, Frank. I don't know if I do. If I, if I did, maybe I would do it earlier than you. I won't do it like you don't start till noon usually, right? So if I do it, if, if Andres can do it on Friday, because I am off Friday during the day again. So if I can do it on Friday, maybe I'll do it earlier in the day. Do like, you know, 10 a.m., 9 or 10 a.m. my time. And we'll do an hour. I don't want to keep him too long. I'm sure he's a busy guy. I got lots to do. Um, but I'm assuming that he can do it Friday. I don't even know if he can. So if he can, I'll do it early. Um, and we can transition right to you. Um, and then if not, Victor, it only works once. <laughs> it doesn't work more than once. <laughs> it's a great time for the UK, Seamus. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Victor, it only works once. <laughs> Did I... Diogo, it only works once. <laughs> Still on? I've already won stickers. Just saying hi. Oh, yes, Vanessa. I saw your... I did put your address on a label. Hi and bye again. <laughs> hi. Bye. Yeah, we're still going. We're finishing up, though, finally. My eyes are getting heavy. My eyes are getting heavy. I got to go to sleep. I was up at 4 a.m. Never saw your name? Oh, really? Okay, let's make sure you're on there. Diogo, right there, buddy. You were like right at the beginning. <laughs> we got you. We got you. Ninety-nine. Ati Robotics. Ati Boy Robotics. Love it. Number five. And I know somebody else won twice, and that's okay. I'll send you a couple extra stickers. I don't know how uh, that's, this is nice because it is trying, it is helping me keep track of the winners. This is fantastic for that. It really helps me to figure, so not only can I, you know, I know who won, but uh, it helps me check people off when I'm looking back. So don't look too close. I'm on there three times. Oh, cause you can technically, Gary has, uh, Gary knows the loophole and I don't mind telling you guys if you want to do it, you can go to Twitch and YouTube and discord and enter. You don't have to, you don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, I, I expect that everybody will get stickers at some point. Uh, that's the that's the idea. Need to upvote this stream. How does that work? Upvote this stream. Oh, it was great. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And you know what? This might be one that I will... Um, I'll try and do a thumbnail for. And that's another thing I could use help with again. Alian has been great, but I know he's busy. And, you know, he's young. He's growing. He's got school and he's got things. My boy's... They don't understand this stuff as much that I, I tried to get them into it as much, but um, timestamps for topics on the live streams, man, I would love to have some help doing that because um, I like doing it. I like going back and watching the videos, but that's time that I don't spend making new ones. And so I haven't done it for the last few weeks. Try Fiverr. Maybe they would do it. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. JD, that's a good idea. I'll, can I pay them with stickers? <laughs> <laughs> if I have like if I, if I say oh, if you want to do the timestamps for it I'll send you stickers um, started using surgery clamps for your DIY instead of tweezers you should have access to those I use them all the time you want to see some <laughs> these are my these are my surgical instruments that uh, we throw these away I, I would bet for some of you guys in your countries that sounds ridiculous um, but we throw these away so if I can get them that aren't uh, bloody or that I can clean easily I've brought home several this is a pair of scissors fancy little scissors and then these these I use these all the time because we do, I do a lot of central lines, so I put lines in, so I suture the, the suture onto people's necks. So I've thrown away a hundred of these things, and then this was a pair. I can't remember where I found these. Um, 
But anyways, yeah, I use these all the time. They're great because they, they, they latch like that. So you can clamp them. <laughs> it's probably a market for secondhand, um, single, oh, single use printed on the side. Does it say single use on them? I just think that is so horribly wasteful. Don't you, don't you think that's a wasteful? I'll start, I'll start grabbing them. I'll start grabbing them again and see if I can build up a collection. Because I get them all the time and we, we seriously throw them away. And I think that's so horrible. Borrowed those from work, did you? I, I took them out of the trash can, basically. <laughs> uh, I wish, Bashar, I wish. If I could do that, if I could ship things with the stickers, I'd be shipping um, uh, grip ties. Don't forget grip ties. Don't forget grip ties. Grip lock ties. Grip lock. Griplockties.com. Free shipping if you use the Dr. Z's code when you check out. Fancy grippy ties. You can unlock them. You can, uh, and they've got this this little grippy stuff on them here, so they work really well for things you don't want to get uh, um, destroyed and all this stuff. Anyways, <laughs> sell them on eBay maybe. Rutger, I'm a I'm an anesthesiologist. I'm an actual doctor of sleep. That's the Dr. Z's in the name. So, all right, <clears throat> that was. It's been a long time. I think about that all the time. Oh, I keep forgetting to plug Ziploc. Ziploc ties or grip lock ties. I keep forgetting to plug grip lock ties. Did I drop a link already in there? I don't think I dropped a link in there. What's wrong with me? All right, let's see. Oh, single use. Yeah, sure enough. Ooh, yours look nice too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, not if you send it to me. You got to. Oh, did you put it in the. Anyways, it's all good. All right. Okay, what are those locking tweezers called? My best friend is going is an OBGYN, I'm sure. Um, you could just ask him for just any kind of clamps. These, uh, just a, this is, would probably be called a needle driver. It's a needle driver because that's that's what what you use this for is to hold the needle when you're suturing so that you don't you don't have to hold it with your fingers. And um, they use curved most of the time. Not all of them, but most of the time we use curved needles. And so when you hold a curved needle with one of these, it's very easy to just twist your wrist and it goes in the skin and back out of the skin. And then you can grab the needle again and pull it out and tie the knot. So hemostats, you could call me hemostats. Um, most of the time, uh, we, I don't, I certainly don't call them hemostats. Some, some older surgeons might still. Well, you're an anesthesiologist too? Nice, Nick. Have we already had this conversation? I should, so we need to have a conference. Now we need to have a business conference in the UK. What do the stickers look like? These are the Z stickers. I wish they would have filled up a little bit more of the, I wish they would have filled up a little bit more of the circle, but that's the Z's logo sticker. And then these big, huge home assistant stickers. <laughs> and I've got a thousand of these. Um, once they're done, I'll get more of these that are different. Um, so that's the stickers that I have that I got printed. So, all right, let's do it. Are you guys ready? Let's ready to finish. Let's get, let's, let's finish it up. Okay. It's time to call up the kids now, Dawson. Do you want to tell them? Can you make him monster? Sure. Okay. Everybody cover your Amazon echoes. So do you have a home assistant button in your love lace for your anesthesiologist work? Sort of. I have a button that t that says when I'm at work. Thanks, James. Thanks for subscribing. More unicorns. Um, let's see. I would like to, I would love to integrate some automation projects and some of this stuff into medical devices and medical ideas. And I have some, of course. Um, and, I've, and I've done some inventing in medical device arena and it's difficult and plagued with... Um, with pitfalls <laughs> would be the way I would say it. Why is that thing saying home? Oh, friend request. Um, anyways, so what was I going to do? I was totally got distracted. Distracted three <laughs> times now. Oh, we were going to end the thing. Okay, that's right. Plug your ears. Plug your, mute your stuff. Oh, I'll do this. I'll mute this. Tell everyone it's time for sign off. Mute button.
Have you tried making an offline chatbot with Himmel that runs on a Pi? Nope. Well, I've made a chatbot. No, I haven't. Audi Robotics, I have not. Sounds cool. Can you use Homestead for real jobs like for customers? Yes, Isaac, you can. Yes, you can. Well, yes, you can. But you I mean, it's open source, so there are open source rules to use, but yes, you can. You could use it and make a business out of it. I think other people have been talking about doing that. I don't know if anybody really has. It was, Rutger. I changed it recently. <laughs> Medical Engineering Research Unit. Nice. That's your full-time job, Mark. Where are you? The problem I had, I invented a thing, and the problem I had was I we went to a little business conference, a business uh, development contest to try and raise money. Um and uh, the it was for the University of Michigan. It was at the University of Michigan, and um, they they put the they filmed it, they videoed it, and they posted the video of the presentations to a website and made it public. And if so, you know, I'm sure, Mark, if you make a public disclosure of your idea, you can no longer apply for a patent. And even though my idea was good and it could have, and it would save money and it, and it would be something that people would buy shh, and, it, shh, and it would be something people would buy. Uh, nobody, I, I couldn't produce it. No business that wouldn't give me any money. Uh, I couldn't get any loans to, to do anything because there was no patent on the design. So even if I would have done all the stuff and, and invented it and, and we could have produced them and gotten them distributed and all that stuff. Um, Anybody just the next day could have copied that design, and so there would have been no reason to, for anybody to buy the company or whatever. So, anyways, it's a long story, but it's a long story, and it's a little sad and it's a little upsetting for me now, because <laughs> that would have been a really good, really good deal back in the day. So, anyways, all right, are we ready? Oh, nice, Mark. Design and build medical products for Dave. That's really cool, man. All right, are you guys ready? We are gonna first thing we're gonna do is we need to pick winners. Can I push the button? Sure. Have There's 129 people. Yeah, we need to have. Don't we need to have our new friends do it? Yes. Our visitors from outer space. All right. Which one are you, Scott? Yep. Yes, I got it right. All right, Scott, you need to press this drum roll button, okay? Here we go. Here we go. The winner is. Seven Act Thirteen. Seven Act Thirteen. You win. Congratulations. Send me your address in Discord, and we will get some stickers to you in the mail before too long. Get patented if you give Say, all the profit. Can I do it next time? <laughs> yes, you can do it next. All right, let's do it. We can talk about now, patents and made. medical devices guess another time too. Sam. Yeah. All right, you're Sam. You're on TV, press Sam. Okay, press the drum. Grand Warlock. Grand Warlock, Grand you win. Warlock. Congratulations. All right, send me your address in Discord so I can get you some stickers. Now, how are we going to sign off, kiddums? New York style. New oh, we're going to sign off like, like New Yorkers? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, like Newsies. Next time Right. Yeah, so we're gonna this time we're gonna do newsies. No, Seamus, if you don't have stickers, just send me your address, my What's friend. Newsies? We're gonna do congratulations to the winners. We're gonna do it like newsies. You guys know how to do it like newsies? No. Can you talk like newsies? Have you ever watched newsies? All right, well you can do it however you want. Okay. We're gonna do uh, we this is what we say. As oh, always, you did it the other day. With us. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. Okay, one, once I count to three, ready? One, two, three. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time. Oh, yes. Oh, that was horrible. Did you hear me? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time. Adios. Scottish style for future streams. You got it. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for the live chat. Choo-choo, homies. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, everybody. Love you. Okay. 